gentlemen, welcome to a spooktacular version of the Plapcast. Behind the funny. Behind the funny. Where we find out what goes on behind the scenes at a comedy club during Halloween. During Halloween, but the night before because we're actually closed on Halloween. I'm Barbara Holiday, the co-owner of Flappers, and I also do a little bit of the booking. And yeah. I'm Joshua Snyder, the a comedian and also the promotions director at Flappers Comedy Club and Restaurant. Why are we talking in these somewhat scary voices? <laughs> trying to create a mood. Ooh, Halloween. Do you know what the worst day of the year for a comedy club is? Halloween, I Halloween, believe. Halloween, yes, that correct. is right. That's correct. So what are we doing to combat that this year? Well, on, on actual Halloween, we're closed, which I think is a brilliant Yay, move. Yay, go to haunted <laughs> houses, get your goof on, your spook on, whatever, get your... Dress like a slut, do what you do. Yeah, right. I mean, that's what, wear those bad heels and throw up on a pizza. You exactly, know? yes. Do perfect. that, enjoy. Yes. Uh, but on the night before Halloween, we were Sunday. doing... Sunday. Sunday, October, October 30th. 30th. We're... <laughs> We're I'm going to mimic everything you do. I'm going to annoy you so bad today. You ready? Oh, really? You tell me. Uh, all right. All right. Well, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was just for us, if uh, you're watching. Uh, I thought, I see, normally I was the annoying one. You I'm are. Okay. I'm switching, because it's Halloween. Oh, I'm, gotcha. I'm impersonating you. Oh, I see. Right. Gotcha. But all on right. Sunday, we're doing the most amazing comedy idea ever. You know, comedians never get to do cover tunes like musicians. Mm -hmm, exactly. So we came up with a way that comedians can do covers. Yes, it's called Dead Comedians Night. Yep. Boo! That's right. Or are they saying boo? <laughs> <laughs> boo! <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, live like comedians doing dead-on impersonations. Yeah, it's actually comedians dress up as their favorite dead comedian and re and actually do their sets. It's really amazing. Um, last year we had Lucille Ball. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Someone mm -hmm. I know may have done Lucille Ball. No, I really. can't <laughs> it, it was me. No. I can't do a vocal impression of her, though. I did the uh, the candy scene when, and the conveyor belt. I look like her and I dress right. like her, but I... It was all You're that. Not smoking enough cigarettes. No, That's that scene was so great to recreate, though, because it's real physical comedy, which I love. So I did that. We also had um, last year. We oh, in the past, we've actually done it the last two years. We we've had Mae West here. I think we we've had done it every year. George and Gracie. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. Mom, Mom's Mabley, I believe. Yeah, Mom's Mabley. That's right. Uh, Robin Williams. Last year, someone yeah, did, did Robin Williams. Yep, That's Robin right. Williams. Uh, Bill Hicks, George Carlin. And this year on the uh, docket, we have Groucho Marx, <coughs> a.k.a. Uh, oh, and Joshua Snyder. Can you do the voice now? Come on. Do say it. Dance monkey. Dance monkey. Say to Magic Void and the duck comes down. Perfect. So Groucho will be hosting along with, we're going to, uh, we're expecting to see, hopefully, as long as they arise from the grave in time, mm. Joan Rivers, two sets. Ah, uh, can we talk? Well, you're going to do every single one. Okay, try to do every one of these on the lineup as I do it. Okay. Gotcha. Perfect. Joan Rivers. Uh, Robert Schimmel. I, I don't know who that is, but I'll fake it. Ambiguously gay duo. Right? Schimmel. That's Robert Smigel. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, Smigel. <laughs> okay. Johnny Carson. Oh, that's wild. Sam Kinison. <laughs> Go where the food is! Wow. That was a good yell. Okay. John you see that? Sam! <laughs> she was going to be in 20 years from now? Sam! Oh, my drum, <laughs> my drum beat didn't work. All right. Uh, John Belushi. Uh, ooh, John Belushi. Uh, 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 hey, you want to see a zit? That's not it at all. That's These are all men. When a woman, <laughs> ah, when a woman comes up, I'm gonna try and do her. Okay, uh, Bill Hicks. I I would I would not dare do Bill Hicks justice. We could play the clip of though, because we have that cued. Let's do that. Play a clip of Bill Hicks. Let's play it. I just heard my voice. I heard my vocal. I just heard. Uh.
Wow, that was great. Yes. That was a really good Bill Hicks uh, yes. impression there. Josh? Thank you. Thank okay. you. I just uh, uh, if I summoned it. I channeled it, if you will. Ooh, we should have a seance before. That's a good idea to call up the dead comedians. Right. Mm, Although, I, like I don't it. know. Do you want to be haunted by some of them, though? Mm. That'd be interesting. All right. I'm already haunted by enough live comedians. <laughs> I don't know if I need Isn't <laughs> the that dead right. ones. Okay, who's Dolomite? Dolomite? I Anyone? Way down in the jungle deep. Badass hands step on a signified monkey. Badass lion stand on a signified monkey's feet. We've got to verify this, but we think Dolomite may have just appeared <laughs> in our studio. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, I've got a clip of Mitch Hedberg. Mitch He's Hedberg. Yeah, let's play some Mitch Hedberg. And they gave me a receipt for the donut. I don't need a receipt for a donut. I'll just give you the money, you give me the donut. <laughs> and the transaction. <laughs> we don't need to bring ink and paper into this. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just cannot imagine a scenario where I'd have to prove that I bought a donut. <laughs> Some skeptical friend, don't even act like I didn't get that donut. I got the documentation right here. <laughs> All right, Mitch Hedberg. Oh. Yes. And then I heard Chris Farley is actually going to be dropping by as well. Mm, that's right. Can you do Chris Farley? Uh, uh, in a van down by the river. No, I can't. I can't do Chris Farley. In a van <laughs> down by the river. <laughs> that wasn't bad. Huh? Thank there you. we go. Thank, Thank you. you. And that was the female right. version of Chris Farley. We've got uh, that. We've got Andy, Andy Kaufman. Kaufman. I have to give a little credit to the amazing Jimmy Plumby, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Jimmy Plumby is the live comedian who will be portraying Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman has come back to us for three years. Yes, he has been here for the last couple of years. Yes. And if you like Andy Kaufman, you will like Jimmy Plumby. <laughs> He's yes, crazy. it is an equivalent crazy performance. Crazy, yes. zany, physical and just enough vocals to make Andy Kaufman work. So come see him. Yes. And then this it is, he is a, he is a lot of fun. He, he is. Yes. He is a, is a he will uh, he will play with you. Yeah. He will mess with you. Yeah. He'll keep going after the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun. Like literally last year, I think the audience did not the audience thought that we had staged a guest in the audience. Yeah. It was that good. So, and that's the stuff Andy Kaufman used to play around with. Yep. And coincidentally, you will not believe this, folks, but live in our studio is Tori Williams, who will be playing the dead comedian Richard Pryor. Hello. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's, it feels real good to be here today, even though. I, uh, I turned up a little early, and niggas is usually late. <laughs> Ooh. The white right? people did not say that <laughs> on this podcast. I don't know who y'all had last year, but this year it's going to be motherfucking ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, wow, Richard Pryor is here. Uh, feel free to chime in with us, Richard, as we go through the rest of our Dead Comedians lineup. What's it like up there in heaven, by the way? Or are you in hell? <laughs> Based on my life, I'm up there in heaven. I'm definitely up there in heaven. Um, I even before then, I knew Jesus. He stayed in the floor above me. Nigga wouldn't wake up in the morning. <laughs> okay, even okay. though he said, "Yes, Jesus is black. Jesus is black." <laughs> Nigga well. said he won't. He rose seven days after re his resurrection. <laughs> okay, Richard. I'm misquoting the Bible, but hey. And now, even though you're dead, I, I got to tell you, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with you using that, that word here. Is what that word? a... Well, we did book Richard Pryor, after all. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Let's, let's <laughs> so, uh, th also, I, I, I heard that Moms Mabley is going to be uh, showing up as well. Correct, yes. I don't know Moms Mabley either. Huh? Huh? Google? Huh? Josh? Uh, can you do it? I... <laughs> Do we have a mom's I, I would. It, uh, I, I would uh, not. That would not be good if I did mom's maybe. She's Richard, a Richard, phenomenal, can you do a mom's phenomenal maybe? female black comedian? And for me to, to do mom's that, maybe, who's that would would be uh, Richard effectively destroy any chances I have. Seriously, of being Richard, look, that's mom's maybe. She was very very funny. Let's see. Uh, oh. Yeah, you recognize her, right? 
crazy old lady. She did a lot of guest spots on a lot of different. Um, I remember when she was young. She looked good. Whoopi Goldberg did a <laughs> documentary on her. Actually, she was this quite a stereotypical character, really. Um, if you're googling her right now, you should because she is crazy. I don't have an audio clip on her, but she's going to be here on Sunday, so you can come and hear you her. You know, who I wish we could get. We've never gotten. I w- I'd like to see Madeline Kahn. That'd be nice. Oh, I love Madeline. Is she dead? Ye- yes. Oh <laughs> man. See, this is the thing about this show is you do you have to question like who really you know I I do want to sh- give um, a sincere shout out to some great comedians who actually recently passed. Uh huh. Um, Tommy Ford mm. Mm. from The Martin Show and many other uh, shows, a, a, a phenomenal actor as well as comedian. Martin, did you ever think Peter Pan was gay? What do you mean, Tom? Well, he was always in that forest with them lost boys. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, sweet. And uh, Kev- uh, another one, too. Well, Kevin oh. Meany was Kevin real Meany. recent. Yeah. Do yeah. We, we have a clip of Kevin, I think. We do? Put, yeah. Oh, we gosh. Should. If you don't know who Kevin Meany was, you, you should listen to this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Kevin Meany. Uh, I'm thinking about changing my first name to Eeny. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Eeny Meany, figure it out for yourselves, folks. Uh, <laughs> parents' names are Miney and Moe. I have a little brother by the name of Teeny Meany. <laughs> And I have an Aunt Jeannie. Good night, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad I have you right here. Thank God, my eye! I'm gonna poke my eye out. I don't believe it. My mother would say, you're doing that on purpose. Putting the microphone in your eye. Why do you do things like that? You're like a crazy person. The other comedians aren't poking their eyes out. Why do you have to do that? One of these days, one of your crazy friends is going to put a needle in that microphone. (laughs) Then it's going to be real funny, isn't it? Walking around with one eye. Why do you do this to your father and I? You're like a mental case on stage. I don't think you want to see. You probably have your one eye jokes already written. God, you're like a crazy person. Anything in my house could poke an eye out when I was a kid. Be passing pizza across the table. You're gonna take your brother's eye out with that slice. <laughs> now put your goggles on and go to bed. And stop rolling around up there. Rolling in the bed. Why are you rolling? Your brothers don't roll. Your father doesn't roll. You're like a crazy person rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I see if he says his, his slogan was, that's not right. What a wordsmith they he was. They were crazy, not me. We couldn't wear tight pants growing up in my family. We couldn't wear tight pants. You're not wearing those tight pants out, mister. Put your big pants on. <laughs> going outside with tight pants on. We're big pant people. Get upstairs your room and put your big pants on. The Lobermans are coming over. And you're wearing tight pants. Why? Your father doesn't wear tight pants. Wow, that guy. Wow. That's just one long act out of his mom. The yeah. Cra- the crazy thing about heaven is, like, it's so spread out. You don't hear about people dying until you find them. Mm. Like, I did not find Tupac until, like, <laughs> 20 years after the fact. Until both of you were dead. Pretty much. <laughs> Wow, it's it's so fascinating to have Richard Pryor right in front of us. Are there there's so many questions well, I have? Technically, to the side of us. Yes, yeah. Richard Pryor. Uh, <laughs> there's so many questions I want to ask of you. Um, number one, w- um, why the toy? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, it was a great movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, uh. what prompted you to do that movie? What inspired you to do that movie? He was in the toy. Right. Yeah, and then, and then I have a follow-up question about Superman three. Richard, please. It, um, <laughs> He's thinking. I'm the money. I'm it was the money. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty much the money yeah. and all the pussy I was gonna get. There we go. There it is. Like. <laughs> and plus, uh, my woman at the time, she said, like, if y- she was intimidated by all the women I was gonna get, and she said, if you do this movie, I will not love you anymore. <laughs> So I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Richard. And what was your 
<laughs> what was your follow-up question, Josh? I was going to ask uh, why you were in Superman 3, but I assume it was the same answer. It was pretty much that. And, like, back in the day, I had did a skit called Super Nigger. <laughs> <laughs> God. <And laughs> did, I can we block <laughs> this word out? Richard, <laughs> you can't do this here in the live world. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm I'm editing Richard Pryor right now. This is <laughs> bad. I a white woman is editing Richard Pryor. This is bad. Okay. Well, Please you're continue. White woman. continue. Oh, oh man. Yeah. You're allowed to say it. Please send your letters to letters <laughs> at flapcast.com. <laughs> <laughs> and they will be answered be in a gentle. timely manner. Please and be uh, gentle. We do our best here. We'll send you free you tickets. Are going to a dead guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, come at me. Uh, can we talk? Can we talk? Tori can we talk about uh, yeah. uh, Gary Shandling? That's another one. Oh. I wanted to talk about. He Gary? passed away. Yeah. This year. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And he was wha- he was one of my uh, personal favorites. Oh, then why? Not, not just Tell because he why. was Jewish, but... <laughs> why was Gary, Gary such an influence for you? Uh, because... Uh, he, first of all, he was, uh, uh, self-deprecating, and that's something I can, uh, I'd s- steal. Uh, he was able to, he, he really, s- he took, when he went, when he crossed over into film and television, he went kind of farther and took things deeper. Uh, like the, uh, you know, it was about, uh, when he did the show, the, the Larry Sanders show, um, and he... I think approached it with a way that was much more sophisticated than the sitcoms that were out at that time, and w- his the characters that he wrote on that show had more depth. Like he, I was watching an interview with him, and he was talking about how uh, there's a scene where he's you know with Jeffrey Tambor, who was also on that show, phenomenal actor, of course. Jeffrey Tambor, personal friend of mine. Yes, indeed. And amazing talent. And he's... Now where do we even begin on that one? And he talked about how, you know, he would have a line like, you know, why are you doing that? D- d- and, and uh, wha- you know, why, why are you doing that to to his, you know, the Jeffrey Tambor character who was always, you know, kind of a screw-up. And, w- you know, Gary was talking about how, you know, when he was acting it, he was, you know, he's saying, he was, he's saying, I... I tried to say that line as if I was coming from a place of love. Like, I, I'm saying this because I love you, not because I hate you. And just that kind of, you know, precision uh, that he applied to what he was doing, that kind of sophistication was just, it was really neat. I well, mean it wasn't was, it, was it one of the first shows that actually made fun of a sort of a mockumentary of television in a way? Because, yeah. Because, you know, no one had really done that yep, yet. Yep, it was before The Office. It was all... It was before, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was before Louie, but it was kind of... Do you know what year it was created? What year? I, I'm going to guess. Um, I 89? 92. 92. 92. Okay. It, w- it went from 92 uh, to 98. And um, Rip Torn was in it, too. Yeah. That yeah. Uh, Rip Torn, Janine Garofalo was there yep. for part of it. Uh, Penny Johnson, Jeremy Piven... That's crazy. Did you know that? I did not know that. Bob Odenkirk. And and then a bunch of an always celebrity guests in every episode. Um, you know, and seeing him. The uh, show won 24 major awards, including three primetime Emmys. But, you know, the thing about Shanling was he was that, that was, he was very authentic on s- in his stand-up as well as in that character. I mean, that, like, he was, Gary Shanling was Gary Shanling. Mm-hmm. Always, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. he didn't. Even though he was an actor, he was always Gary Shandling. Right. Yeah. yeah. You should do him next year. I sh- yeah. Yeah, I why don't you work on that? Well, maybe I'll do him this year. If right. I'm fast enough. We'll see. Yeah, you know someone who hasn't been impersonated in our Dead Comedian show who I keep forgetting has passed because he came to Flappers many times? And this is such a tribute um, to our favorite comedians uh, passing, but that was Taylor Negron. Oh, right. And mm. I s- Taylor Negron is such a strong presence in this club for me. He came several times in our first couple years. And um, it was even just a recent recently, as about six months ago, I mentioned, oh, Taylor Negron. And a friend of mine said, oh, no, he passed. And I was yeah. like, I knew he passed. But I, ca- I don't want to know it in my head. Mm-hmm. But... Um, what a flamboyant, amazingly unusual personality, Taylor right. Negra. Very creative too. He he would just get on stage and and create things. He mm-hmm. was a definitely a new creator all the time, you know. A lot of storytelling too, right? Yes, and yeah. no, he was afraid of nothing. Like mm-hmm. he had that guy had no fear. Yeah. Um, I miss him. Taylor, Richard, would you say hi to Taylor in heaven for me? If I can find him. 
<laughs> I mean, it's pretty much down here. Uh, it's pretty much that like down here, up in heaven. Pretty just that God is watching over everybody, and it's like there's a whole bunch of mansions, and it's all white. I thought <laughs> I woke up in the wrong heaven for a bit. Are like the comedians in th the same uh, community as the regular people, or are all the comedians in one place together? It's uh, it's all it's all pretty um, bunched in together. Like it's like an elevator. We can we can barely move. Too many good people down here. <laughs> they are coming up. <laughs> We're losing too many good people. What? You guys are losing too many good people. The yeah. The Calvin Coolidge Home for Dead Comedians. I was just googling dead comedians just to make sure that I was you know ca catching everyone and to see if there was a list. And this is what came up: the Calvin Coolidge Home for Dead Comedians. It's a fantasy weird fiction novella. Oh. It was first published in fantasy and sci-fi fiction in June 1988. So it's not actually. Oh, uh, it's not real. It's okay. not a it's physical place. It's, gotcha. a, it's, it's a, a. It's a book. It's, it's a, a book. It's a humorous book. Yeah, we it's it basically it's about in the afterlife Leonard finds himself confined to the Calvin Coolidge Home for Dead Comedians, an institution where comedians who were rude, offensive, obscene, and blasphemous are kept until they can learn to shed those elements of their personalities which would make them unfit for heaven. It makes sense. That is a we need to read this. Maybe we should uh, read an excerpt from it on Sunday night. Quite possibly. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Um, let's talk about the comedy and horror connection. Hmm. Do you uh, do you have any comments on that, Groucho? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why I put that in the same sentence. Well, uh, w if we're talking about whores. Yeah. Um, but don't you find it weird that I think that people who like comedy actually really also like horror? Well, it's the same rhythm. I was I was actually talking about this with a friend who is a director and how. You know, you're directing a, a scene in a movie, in a comedy versus a horror movie. It, you, it's building tension and releasing tension. Just in one particular case, the tension that's released, you laugh. And in the other case, you scream or go, well, this was a waste of money. Ooh, spooky sound effects. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Um, well, it's funny because I don't like, uh, we were just discussing this. Personally, I'm not into the horror genre at all. Uh, I don't like the blood and like the. Uh, I think it's all kind of really stupid, actually. Like the killers and there's always six killings, <laughs> right? It's <laughs> it's like there's this pattern of, you know. I find that my life is a horror movie enough that I don't need to. Uh, <laughs> but but watch that. But weirdly, uh, I do like true crime. Yes. We were discussing this. It's yes. It's an odd. Which thing. is creepier to me? Cr true crime is way creepier. Yeah. It's it's. Mentally, just strange that I would be so into that. So and you don't like the, the so comedy. you don't like the horror movies because it's not creepy enough. I will maybe. not watch a horror movie. Right. Like I will not. Like it, when I was in high school, though, the reason probably for this is I would come home from school every day, and my mother and sister were always watching horror films. Like that was really big in the you know eighties <laughs> age. Uh, <laughs> And oh, they like into Nightmare yeah, on Elm it was Street like and Friday Freddy. the Thirteenth, and like every movie has the same structure. Like you know, mm -hmm. oh, are they on the first murder or the sixth murder? Like right. you know exactly. But it wasn't just that; it was just so it's so gory and scary. And don't you have nightmares about that? But then I can watch Dateline, mm -hmm. NBC, and see a true crime what's thing, and I don't I don't react the same. What's really interesting about horror movies is uh, like it, it can bring out some really funny experiences like you know the horror and the comedy aspect like taking your date out to see a movie like <laughs> you definitely already seen it yet like once she asked all the questions and like all right all right don't tell me don't tell me no I just want to listen I just want to see this movie I just want to see it don't tell me anything is he gonna die <laughs> Thanks, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm in the wrong business because you know the thing about Halloween that's so awesome for the horror business and the and the, ha and the haunted house and Halloween business 
is these people only have to work one month a friggin' year, and they make all their money for the whole rest of the year, right? But, it, but a one-day holiday is becoming a one-month-long thing, I've noticed. We're celebrating Halloween earlier and We earlier. do. It's the whole month of October. Right. Like, that's, Halloween is all... All I'm of fine October. with that, actually. I, I, Are you? I, I th Are well, you going to a haunted house? Here's what I propose. Let's trade Halloween for Columbus Day and make Halloween the official holiday and get rid of Columbus Day. That That's my vote. Mm. I don't know. Um, I do need to give a few credits. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but there's a beautiful pumpkin sitting on our stage, and um, I would like to tell everyone <laughs> where we received this pumpkin from the amazing Jane Lynch brought us this pumpkin right here. I am not kidding. Richard, wow. did you ever get to meet Jane Lynch? She's still alive, by the way. <laughs> uh, and, and thankfully, I'm very happy about that. She was a fine white woman. Oh, yeah, you like red jumpsuits? I love red jumpsuits. <laughs> I like her attitude. <laughs> what was the context of the pumpkin giving? So uh, we were doing a great show here called uh, Kate Flannery and the Lampshades. Mm -hmm. Kate Flannery played Meredith in The Office. She is hilarious. Still alive. Still alive, yes. And Scott Robinson, her partner, Still they alive. are they are uh, ha they have a musical uh, duo called The Lampshades and they do these amazing loungy uh, songs and she also wears a red jumpsuit, <laughs> I will say. Uh, and Jane Lynch came to support her friend and brought us this pumpkin at the same time. So nice I'm I'm friends. quite excited about it, and uh, the lampshades are doing another show on a Christmas holiday show. Yes, on the it's the Sunday November after twenty seventh. Yeah, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, and uh, there'll be a couple of special guests in there. I don't know who, but uh, the lampshades have a lot of friends. They'll that probably be alive. Yeah, they'll be alive and they'll be watching and they'll be um, contributing. I hear to the Christmas holiday show. It's an annual show that uh, they do. So. Definitely um, hop in to get some tickets for that. That'll be Be exciting. sure to get a Ouija board and re-summon me for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> really? You coming to that one? Yeah. Does anyone know the history of the Ouija board? Uh, I believe it started as an attempt to get laid. That would be my guess. Do you, ha do you guys have a Ouija board? Uh, I do. I you, you know, <laughs> black no, people, I we're superstitious. <laughs> we, we can't be dealing with that shit. <laughs> So you you it, people have not contacted you, Richard, through the Ouija board? Hell no. <laughs> I'm disappointed. <laughs> I thought at least Eddie Murphy would try to call, call me. <laughs> seeing as I did a fucking movie with him. That's true. Harlem Nights, 1982. Well, so the Ouija board is known as a spirit or talking board. It's a flat board marked, you know, has all the letters on it. And you all put your fingers on it. Right, the outside edges. And I'm not reading this part, just so you guys know. I actually know this stuff. And we all sit around and we put our fingers on the edges of it, and it has a hole, right? There's a little marker on the top that will basically, your energy will make, will guide the board into picking letters that will spell out a sentence or tell you something about now about what is going on. Did you play or it someone who wants? It's not a game, Josh. It's a Ouija board. Did I? I'm sorry. Play did you it? summon anyone? <laughs> I have had a séance, yes, and when I've, it's, it's all in an effort to talk to people in the in the afterlife. So, um, so what? So, who did you talk to when you played it? Or, I'm sorry, when you summoned a dead animal of a mine, a dead, a dead cat. Yes, oh. I and wanted to speak to a dead cat. What the, can I ask? What the cat said? Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Delayed. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> I, I must also say that Ouija is actually a trademark of Hasbro, just so you know. I thought just so we don't get in trouble uh, using the word Ouija board. Um, I heard that. I movie think that's the least of our out. problems on this one. Yeah, but you know, some Christian denominations have warned against uh, using Ouija boards because they can lead to demonic possession. So they actually, the Christians obviously believe in the Ouija board. Right? Mm -hmm. So there must be some truth to it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, demonic possession. I hope you're not demonically possessed because you played Ouija. No. Uh, I mean, th what you don't seem demonically possessed. Oh, that's not what my employees say. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's more <laughs> like it. I had to possess a big, black, muscular dude just to get here, so. Oh, oh. So hey, I have a really scary story to tell you of something that actually happened to us this week. I mean, it kind of muscular. 
Are, <laughs> are you ready for my scary story? Yes. This is a true story. So, um, and this is behind the scenes at a comedy club. You have to hear what goes on behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. Trademark. Richard, you've been in a lot of comedy clubs. You but uh, you may not have heard of this one. So we actually had an OSHA inspector come to our club. Ah! Play the scary. <laughs> uh, right. That's scary enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know what OSHA is, just Google it. I'm not going to Google it. But anyway, it stands for some very important safety people. And I hope they're not listening because we'll probably get fined for this. <laughs> but if they are listening, I will tell you they came to give us some advice um, about our freezer. They warned us, this is the scary part, ooh, that people could get trapped in the freezer. <laughs> this is a true thing that could happen. And so we need to buy an ax to put in our freezer immediately. A fireman's ax. I like that they think that the person who would get trapped in the freezer would be able to use the ax. Well, to get I'm out. just, I, this is true. This is not a made up story. This is a real horror story that happened. So we must buy an ax immediately and put it in the freezer. And I was thinking about why that would be so valuable. And then I did ask, what if the employees use the ax on me? And apparently that's fine. There's right. no. Yeah, there's no write-up for that. See, California <laughs> always favors the employee. It's <laughs> just it's it's true. It's true. So um, I don't know how would you break through that freezer door with an axe? I have to tell you guys, it's like literally like ten inches thick. Well, don't forget, didn't they say that we like had to have training with the axe too? Yes, right. we must do proper axe training uh, while using axe body spray. <laughs> um, Who would we get for the training, Thor? <laughs> <laughs> we're getting, we're missing all our uh, rim uh, shots on that one. A lumberjack or something? So, wait, you guys think I'm, this is not a made up story. I'm telling you that this is a requirement that we must do does in our freezer. Does we have to your put an freezer ax. door, do you have to push it to get out or you have to pull it? You push it. You push it? Yeah. But apparently people, okay, by the way, let's just specify that the freezer is basically, I would say, maybe three foot by <laughs> four foot it's pretty small like you could if you were feeling trapped you could just put your foot up against it and kick i'm just saying i am more scared of having an axe in the building than i am of someone getting locked in the freezer is yeah and i feel like the next time they come they're like why do you have this sharp object here this is well what if someone was reaching for something and accidentally then cut themselves on the axe right I mean, this is, I don't know. I, I, gotta just, I just imagine walking in there. Does this sound safe there. to you guys? No. Okay. It, it, just imagine walking in there. It's like, <laughs> oh, shit, there's an ax. I know what's going to happen next. I seriously, I, not that I am not, I'm not a mean boss. I don't know. You guys tell. Am I a mean boss? Not I'm, at I'm all. I'm the boss lady. Uh, I don't work for you. Oh, right. Well, you have, you would have been on this stage if you were still alive, though, Richard. And I have to pay you on uh, Sunday, too. Otherwise, you guys, you'll haunt me for the rest of my life. Best believe. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I got income taxes. So still? Yeah. <laughs> still outstanding? Mm -hmm. Anyway, isn't that an interesting... That's, that's a great Halloween week story to tell, isn't it? It's nice to know where our I tax dollars are going. I feel very uncomfortable about purchasing an axe and putting it into my freezer. <laughs> I mean, sh don't try this at home, folks. You know what I'm saying? Does it um, have to be an axe? Maybe it could be something else. Osha, are you listening? We are complying, just so you know. All right. So do you have any scary stories like that you'd like to share, Josh? Any scary story? I, uh, what's the scary? Uh, the, all the scary uh, things that happen to me are just, they're not cool scary. They're just neurotic Jew scary, like getting an asthma attack. and. That's your horror story for right. the week, Right, and the nurse telling me the best thing you can do is breathe. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to a haunted house? Uh, my apartment, yes. <laughs> there's, do you know that there's a house in Burbank that, um, the gentleman's name is Preston Meyer, I think, and he transforms his house every year into a haunted house. Um, it's true, and you can go for free. It's on California Street, and, uh, the money gets donated to the Burbank Animal Shelter this year. Oh, so nice. it's free admission to go in. Um, it was in the Burbank Leader today, uh, actually, and the guy's been doing it for, I think, since 99, 
And um, I'm trying to get the exact address because I know our listeners are going to want it. On um, your new iPad Pro. Yeah, uh, Preston Meyer. But can you imagine transforming your entire... By the way, you can't go every day of the week. You have to look... I think you can only go Thursday through uh, through Friday. Transform it away. What house again? I it's this real house. Right. So a family lives in this house in Burbank. But every year, they transform the house into an actual haunted house where people can walk in and be... Scared. Do you think one hundred percent of the family is behind this? <laughs> 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 Unless they have an axe. Uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> they killed off part of the family. Right. Okay. When you have to explain your jokes, that's not necessarily. It was a, a good it was a good callback. Yeah. I was I, f- I was uh, um, I was not present. Right. But uh, would you ever do that to your own house? Uh, if I would do it to my house, if somebody else did all the work. And uh, I didn't have to be work, there. Right? It wasn't my Richard? house. Richard, I mean, and then you have to take it. You, do you know what I, Halloween bugs me because it's just like you put it all up and then you take it all down. I it's like to do. Quick. I like to do a cycle, a more intellectually psychological haunted house where you walk in and somebody says, "This is how much you're going to be getting in social security when you become 65." <laughs> <laughs> We do. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine making my house into a haunted house. I lived in Peoria, Illinois, and I, w- I was worried that if I made my house into a haunted house, people would figure out that it was my house and just start taking shit. <laughs> because, like, you gotta think about it. You have all this shit popping out at you, and you know they can't touch you, and then you just start looking around. It's like. All right, what can I grab out of here before I get through the haunted house? <laughs> that is a good point. I wonder how they handle theft at the the haunted house on California Street. Well, surely they're you know. Hopefully, no one wants to stay in there very long. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one actually wants to. Uh, they said. Although that that, that uh, I feel like what's going to happen if uh, what they should do to if they have the haunted houses want to make money is offer Wi-Fi and then you just get people oh sitting there for hours on their perfect. computer, <laughs> just sitting in there googling other stuff. And why have you it, we get one of them clowns that have been going around oh scaring people? Oh, creepy! Have you? Yeah, what is that? Scary clowns? Just people dressing up as clowns. Well, for no clowns are scary thing. because. Oh, you really want to know the history of this? Y- y- uh, yes, yes, I do. The serial killer, William Gacy? No familiarization here? I thought it was John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy. Right. Did William I say it wrong? I don't know I who said William Gacy is. Or was I thinking William H. Macy? <laughs> yes, I think you were. <laughs> <laughs> it was a clown of a different sort. True. John Wayne Gacy. So you do know the serial killer. So that's what I was trying to get to. Right. And what was he famous for? Well, killing people while dressed as a clown. Yes. And yeah. that is really w- the urban myth of how clowns got scary. I'm that's wha- what do you think that's there's gonna be why a people think. Do you think there's going to be a serial killer who kills people dressed as a stand-up comedian? Do you think that will happen? <laughs> no, but I did hear that there's a website called Not Scary Clowns or something like that. I, have to, I don't have the exact name of it right now, where it's a group of clowns that are fighting to bring back the legitimacy of funny clowns because they're so upset that everyone thinks clowns are scary. So now there's this whole organization that cl- real clowns can join. I actually worked as a clown for a short period of time. Uh, I was Babsy the Clown. Yes, You were afraid your scary. time at Warner Brothers. Kidding, kidding, <laughs> kidding Warner Brothers, <laughs> kidding. Yeah. Babsy the Clown, and I made balloon animals and stuff. And, but I had my hair and pigtails. I was nothing. I was Please not tell scary. me it was kind of an 80s clown. Please tell me. Why? With Why? Th- because I think that would be hilarious if it was true. That well, w- that's awesome. What does an that right 80s there. clown look like? Well, like if you're wearing the, the ponytails, it's like the neon scrungies, right? And yeah, uh, I yeah. was like a real silly little girl clown kind of thing. I don't know. How how Were there scary? neon scrunchies involved? Yes, there That's were. That's awesome. And leg warmers. <laughs> <laughs> Just I bet you still look good as a clown. Oh, mm-hmm. thanks, Richard. That's so sweet. <laughs> uh, I didn't make a lot of money as a clown, though. I don't really recommend the clown business. I don't think there's a lot of money, especially with Ringling Brothers going out of business. Yeah, the only one that. who seemed to really crack that is Donald Trump. True. <laughs> Rimshot? Oh, delayed. Love it. Um yeah, the clown thing is is weird, but I, I don't know. It's just it is because of that, and yeah. uh, it's kind of sad that one one serial killer ruins it for all of the clowns in the universe. It sucks, right? Yeah, it does. There's so many of that kind of stuff. It's like one shoe bomber, and now we have to take off our shoes. I right. mean, it's you know, it's those cases. It's always that one guy. 
Yep. I was going to I was going to ask you if you heard about this experience in LA called Ascension. Have it, you? Uh, no, it it sounds <laughs> like a new cult. Oh, I got to tell you about it. So, it's it's actually the craziest uh, escape room ever. Do you know what an escape room is? Yeah, yes. We've talked I know about what it a little on this show, but You are obsessed with the escape rooms. Well, listen, Ascension is Here's what these guys did. It's brilliant. There was a big article in the LA Times about it. But you, if I tell you right now, you're going to want to go. So these guys, they had their producers, actually, of films, the horror films. And they got tired of producing horror films, just the same old formula, like what I was saying. And so they decided to uh, set up this little basement-type uh, warehouse and just make it like a basic escape room. But they didn't actually promote the escape room. They just promoted a phone number, and they put it on TV, and they just advertised the phone number. And then when you call the phone number, you got an address to a house, to this Ooh. house. And then when you showed up at the house, then you participated in the game, which was an escape room. So, But you couldn't, just, you couldn't find the address. The address was not published anywhere. You had mm -hmm. to phone to get the address. Mm -hmm. And so they took it another step farther, and they took over a warehouse, and it's like 27 rooms, and it's called Ascension, and um, it's like $170 to do it. But apparently each room is a separate uh, scare or horror based on some of your individual preferences. So if, you, if you're afraid of clowns, Josh, mm -hmm. they know you're afraid of clowns. So the first room you go into is all clowns. Yeah. Right? What, what if you're afraid it's of dying alone? How do they, uh, what would that room be, do you think? <laughs> my guess, it would Seriously? I think it would just be a replica of my own bedroom. That's what I think. I would just walk in and go. Mm. All right. Well, clothes on the floor. All right. I'm going to convince you to get into an escape room sometime. Would they have something you, I, like we a... Did, we, did, we did the escape room. Would they have something like a bottomless pit? Like uh, some people, you know, they dream of like constantly falling. Oh, there's... I don't know all... I haven't done it yet, but I really want to do it. But I haven't convinced anyone to do it with me. <laughs> so uh, that's why if anyone's interested, call me up and uh, maybe I'll buy your ticket. Now Send I'll your availability to letters. Time. What? You don't want to go? I'll be in heaven at that time. I got better shit to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... What if you're afraid... Don't do it on the 30th when we're doing Dead Comedian Show. But, if you know, maybe on Halloween night. What if I'm you're sure afraid of escape packed. rooms? Well, you mean you want to escape from escape rooms? <laughs> <laughs> or escape from escape room fanatics? What if life is an escape like room? Me? Life is an escape room. <laughs> We're just constantly trying to yeah. figure it out, how to get out. I right? yes, I need I need a, I need a, the the guy over the intercom. This is so depressing. What a spooky, scary, weird show we're having today. <laughs> but I somehow I feel enlightened by the dead comedians. I, I feel quite I feel right at home actually right? at the depression. I enjoy <laughs> it. it. This is my wheelhouse. You're in my world now. So what we're saying on the Flapcast today is if you want a horrifically or <laughs> hilarious experience on Sunday, come to our Dead Comedian show. We're running it at 7 and 9, Hor right? Uh, no, just 7. Oh, nine, 7 9, though, is The Writers of Ellen. Oh, gosh, that's Which not scary not at all. Not really. The Writers of Ellen, could, <laughs> could there be a more positive, uplifting experience <laughs> to have? So after you watch The Dead Comedians, you can stay and watch The Writers of Ellen. But that is going to be a great show. It's yes. literally... Uh, not all of the writers, but six of the writers. Yeah, a bunch of Ellen writers. From the Ellen show. So yeah. they, they must be able to write good comedy, too. I would assume. Yeah. Well, two of them are actually the Jasons. Correct. They're both named Jasons, and they do musical comedy, and they'll be in the show as well. Right. I highly recommend that. And all of these comedians are alive, by the way, which is a huge, on that night, oh, is a huge thank plus. thank goodness. So you, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, we're, we're actually running out of time. Wow. I know. That's Can a creepy thing to say on this particular podcast. The Ouija board says Meow. that we are out of time. Oh. <laughs> I I'm coming, Elizabeth. <laughs> the Ouija board <laughs> predicts that we will be sold out on Dead Comedians Night, so you must get your tickets now, early. Where do we buy them, Josh, and how much are they? Uh, the tickets are uh, $15. And you can buy them on our website, flapperscomedy.com. But if you dress in costume... You get in free. <gasps> what? Ooh. 
that's actually true at both our Burbank and Claremont clubs. Yes, on indeed. On the 30th. On the 30th, so yes. So don't be a wimp. Dress up. Yes. And don't just put on some tie and say that you're some business guy or Trump or something. you got to actually come in a real costume. Yes. Put some effort into it. Yeah. For please. God's sakes. <laughs> you lazy, pathetic slob. And what is that website again? Flapperscomedy.com? Flapperscomedy.com. I wonder if they have um, Fios in heaven. Do you have Wi-Fi in heaven? We have Wi-Fi, but Jesus takes all up all of it. <laughs> Just watching everybody. <laughs> Richard... Pryor, thank you so much for coming today. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you actually do some comedy. You're set on uh, Sunday night. Yes, I am. I, um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just lucky to be back here on Earth. I'm w lucky to be around you guys. I've had a great time. And hopefully I can take this pumpkin with me that Jane Lynch gave you because I love that woman. Will you <laughs> accept this pumpkin from Jane Lynch? Thank you. Oh, God. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. All right, I everybody. Go back to Thank you so much for joining us on another exciting, spooktacular episode of the Flapcast. Don't miss Adam Ray this Friday and Saturday at our club in Burbank from Ghostbusters. And Ooh. Matt TV. And Matt TV, yes. Right now he's on Matt TV. Precisely. And also in Claremont, do not miss. Uh, 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 Jerry Rocha. There it is. Oh, Jerry Rocha. From Gabriel Iglesias' Stand Up Revolution. Yes, indeed. And a special Halloween show in Claremont on Sunday, 4.30 p.m. Buster uh, Balloon, the yes. greatest balloon artist in the world. Jim Jeffries tonight. Still a few tickets left here at Flappers Comic Club and Restaurant. Thanks again. Happy Halloween.